So Curie was looking at finding different elements that were radioactive. Ernest Rutherford, uh, you may remember we talked about him a little bit, um, and others were focused on what is radioactivity. So the nuclei of these radioactive elements are unstable. They decompose, emitting small pieces of themselves. They do that in order to become more stable. That seems to be the goal of everything, lower energy, more stability. The types of radioactive emissions are alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, and positrons. So these are Greek letters A, B, and C, and then positrons. So we've looked at nuclear symbols before. Let's just review. So here you have the element symbol, and on the upper left, the mass number. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And on the lower left, you have the atomic number, the number of protons. If you need to find how many neutrons there are, you subtract. It's all stacked up here nicely for subtracting. You just subtract A minus Z gives you number of protons. Remember that? Or do you remember hearing about it? Hopefully you're like, well, I don't remember how to do that. I, I, I vaguely remember you talking about that. We'll call that good enough. Most elements have several different isotopes. Some only have one, some have two or three or four. You can't tell by looking at the periodic table how many one has. We often, re bless you, we often refer to a particular isotope of an element as a nuclide. So that term will get used, I would like you to know what it means. We can also represent the elements, uh, the isotopes, by an element, name, or symbol followed by a mass number. So like carbon-14, 14. 14 is the mass number of that particular isotope or nuclide of carbon. We can also represent the main subatomic particles with nuclear symbols. So we've learned that um, atoms contain protons, neutrons, and electrons. So a proton has the symbol P, and it has one proton, because it's a proton, right? It doesn't have any neutrons, so its mass number is still one. A neutron has the symbol N. A neutron has no protons, right? But its mass number is one, because the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And then we have an electron. Electron has the symbol E. Its mass number is zero, and its number of protons is negative one. We'll get to that in a minute. That's, that's weird. How can you have negative one protons? We'll see how that works. So let's look at these different particles. Alpha, alpha decay. In alpha decay, an alpha particle is emitted from the nucleus. This is an alpha particle. An alpha particle is the same as a helium nucleus. This is helium-4 without any electrons. So two protons, mass number of four, so it's two protons and two neutrons, but no electrons. So it's not an atom, but it's the nucleus. So that can get spit out of a nucleus of a larger element. That's called alpha decay, because an alpha particle comes out. So, of course, we need, can write chemical equations for this. We call them nuclear equations because we're looking more specifically at numbers of protons and neutrons and not at balancing in terms of numbers of atoms. So. In these equations, we use the nuclear symbols. So uranium can undergo alpha decay, spitting out an alpha particle, and then it becomes a different element. It becomes thorium. So what's important here, we're not going to look, oh, well, there's one uranium on this side. There must be one uranium on that side. This is a radioactive, a nuclear chemistry thing. Elements do change into other elements in this chapter. Okay. Just in this chapter, don't do it other places. We always include the mass number and the atomic number here. 
And what's important is that the mass numbers on one side of the arrow add up to the mass numbers on the other side of the arrow. So on this side, we have a mass, total mass of 238. And on this side, um, a 4 was emitted. And so this has 234, because 234 plus 4 equals 238. The math here is just adding and subtracting whole numbers. So it's not too bad. Here we have 92. That's the total number of protons. So over here, this one has 90 protons because two protons left the nucleus. Any questions? Yes. So how, how do we know what happens here, basically, is what you're asking. Well, if, if we say there is alpha decay, that means an alpha particle is removed. And we'll do some examples. But So we know that the alpha particle was removed. And so then we're going to look at the mass numbers and the atomic numbers and figure out what these need to be so that they will add with those to give us these. And then we identify this element based on its atomic number. So we'll do some examples, and hopefully that'll be a little clearer. So we figure out the mass number and atomic number of this unknown because the equation must be balanced in terms of mass numbers and atomic numbers. So that thorium that we just were looking at, not exactly the same one. Different isotope of thorium. This also undergoes alpha decay, meaning that an alpha particle, a helium nucleus, is spit, spit out. And you just have to memorize that that's what an alpha particle is. <coughs> so then we have to figure out what's the mass number, what's the atomic number, what element is this? So x, this unknown mass number, plus 4 has to equal 232. So x must be 228. Because we had 232, it lost 4. 232 minus 4 is 228. Where am I going? OK. So that's 228. 228. Everybody okay with that? 228 plus 4 equals 232. We had 90 here. Over on this side, we need a total of 90. This atom lost two protons. So Y has to be 88. So y is 88. We need these numbers. 88 plus 2 has to equal what's on this side. Get that? Now, how do we figure out what element this is? Well, we find 88 on the periodic table. What is it? All right, radium? It's not that I don't believe you, I just, Sorry. yeah, there it is. So we find in the periodic table, and in where this question mark is, we write the symbol, R-A. Now, a lot of the elements we're going to deal with here are unusual ones that we don't use in the rest of general chemistry, so I didn't tell you you had to memorize them. You don't need the names for an exam, for sure. You just get the symbols from the periodic table, and if you don't know what it stands for, don't worry about it. Questions? Mm -hmm. So the top one is the atomic mass of that element, right? The top one is the mass number. So it's not the atomic mass. It's not the atomic mass. Atomic mass is the average mass of all the atoms of that element, <coughs> including all the different isotopes. Yeah, so this, here we're looking at an individual isotope with a particular number of neutrons. 
There are other isotopes of radium, but we're looking at this particular one. There are different isotopes of thorium. You don't need to know which ones exist and which ones don't. But this one, when it undergoes alpha decay, makes this particular isotope of radium. So let's do an example. Write the nuclear equation for the alpha decay of PO216. So we've got PO, we don't need to know what it is. 216 is the mass number. That goes up on the left. We're going to need the atomic number, so we look on the periodic table, it might take a while. It's, PO is 84. Always reminds me of Teletubbies. You have a PO. Mm. PO is polonium. This is one of the elements that Marie Curie discovered. Alpha decay. We need to know what an alpha particle is. So this is going to decay. Um, the book always writes the daughter nuclide. So this is the parent, and the daughter it is, is what is formed from the parent. They always write the parent nuclide first. It doesn't matter. I think it's more convenient to write what gets spit out first. Here's the alpha particle. So when it says alpha decay, this is the alpha particle. One of those is coming out. Okay. And then let's figure out what goes over here. So we're going to need an element symbol. We're going to need a mass number. And we're going to need an atomic number. Four plus what's in this box has to equal 216. What is it? 212. Right? So that's 212. How did I get that? 216 minus 4 is 212. The atomic number, this number plus 2, has to equal 84. So what's that one? Don't yell it all out at the same time. 82. 84 minus 2 is 82. 2 plus 82 equals 84. Here we're not balancing the letters, we're balancing numbers. Then 82, we find 82 in the periodic table. That's lead. Do you need to know that its name is lead? Well, you might for another problem, but not for this one. You just find 82 and write its symbol, PB. There it is. Yes? The alpha particle is always that symbol. So alpha particle is equal to this, always. Um, there are a variety of isotopes that can give alpha particles. And I don't know what they are off the top of my head. Um, in general, the radioactive elements are the, the ones that are larger. So if you see one that has its atomic number in parentheses, like starting at 84, I think they're all with the atomic, atomic, not the atomic number in parentheses, the atomic mass in parentheses. Those are all radioactive. So characteristics of alpha decay, alpha particles. So we use an analogy using different kinds of vehicles to help understand the characteristics of the three important types of um, radioactive decay. So alpha radiation is the 18-wheeler truck of radioactivity, the semi-truck. 
It's massive compared to the other particles. Um, so it has the highest ionizing power. So ionizing radiation, what happens is you get this helium nucleus shooting at matter and it can knock electrons off of different atoms and cause them to be ions. So that, that changes their reactivity, it changes how they behave, that can really mess up your body um, if that happens. And so think of this 18-wheeler truck crashing into something, it's going to do a lot of damage, right? So ionizing power is the ability of radiation to ionize other molecules or atoms. And so this can cause a lot of damage in living tissues. Um, this big truck radiation has the lowest penetrating power. So hopefully on the next slide, yeah. So penetrating power is how well does that radiation go through matter? Alpha particles do not go through matter very well at all, in, in large part because they are large. So in order for a lot of damage to occur, the radiation has to get into your body. Alpha particles can be stopped by a sheet of paper, a thin t-shirt, even a layer of air. So they, they have a hard time getting into your body. They cannot go through your skin. But if you inhale them or inhale a substance that is emitting alpha particles, or ingest it, and they're inside of you, then they can do a heck of a lot of damage. Yes. Um, yes, they, they put the lead vests on you when you're getting x-rays to protect you, um, but they're not protecting you from the alpha particles because just your clothing will protect you from those. So in, in terms of the penetrating power, think of a traffic jam. When a semi-truck gets stuck in traffic, it is super stuck, right? It's going to have a really hard time getting through a traffic jam. So matter is like a traffic jam, and this big truck cannot get through. It's going to do damage on whatever it hits, but it can't get through. So the next type is beta decay. In beta decay, an unstable nucleus emits an electron. Now, what seems to be impossible about that? Are there any electrons in the nucleus? No, no there aren't. So what the heck? What's going on here is that a neutron comes apart and forms a proton and an electron. What? Sorry. So. The neutrons, there's neutrons in the nucleus, right? Those can fall apart into a proton and an electron, and the electron will leave because electrons do not belong in the nucleus. So here, using the symbols, here's the neutron. It can come apart into a proton and an electron. So this is a balanced nuclear equation. One plus zero equals one. One plus negative one equals zero. So that's why the electron has a negative one as its atomic number, because it means um, that a proton was actually made out of a neutron. So try to just be OK with that. So this is what it might look like. Here's a carbon-14 nucleus. Carbon-14 is a radioactive form of carbon. Um, when this undergoes beta decay, an electron leaves, and the, um, the nucleus now has an additional proton, and so the, mat the atomic number goes up. So we get, now we've got nitrogen. Another example here, uh, radium-228 undergoes beta decay. So the electron is emitted, and what's left is actinium-228. 
The mass number doesn't change here when the atom, uh, electron is, is emitted, but the mass atomic number goes up one. Stupid numbers, atomic and mass. Sorry. Any questions? <laughs> Isn't this fun? Is beta decay than alpha? That's a good question. Is beta decay stronger than alpha? Yes and no. <laughs> um, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> It's, it's stronger in one way and not as strong in another way. So let's, let's do a, um, write a nuclear equation first, and then we'll talk about the damage it can cause. So write a nuclear equation for the beta decay of AC228. So here we've got AC228. And what's the atomic number for AC? 89? So this is going to decay. Beta decay, that's an electron. So an electron's coming out, and that has a negative 1 atomic number, and its mass number is 0. Best thing for that is just memorize it. Put it on a flashcard. It's, it's kind of the opposite of alpha decay. It sort of depends on how you look at it. It's different. Same process, Same process, a different particle coming out, definitely. So then, again, we have to find an atomic number and a mass number over here. So start at the top. This one's easy. 228. Zero plus what equals 228? 228. Mass number doesn't change. 89. Over here, I need negative 1 and something to add up to 89. 90. So there's that pesky negative sign. Be careful. So 90 and negative 1, put them together, you get 89. Okay? 90 is what? Thorium? TH? So I look at this 90, I find that on the periodic table, and I write the letters that are in the same box, TH. OK? This is actually easier than some of the other stuff we've done, right? you got to remember what the particle is. But after that, it's not bad at all. Okay, so is beta decay, is beta radiation stronger? Well, beta radiation is the four-door sedan of radioactivity. Alpha decay was a semi-truck. This is a car, a mid to large car. So less massive than the alpha particles, smaller. So when it hits matter, and ionizes things, it doesn't ionize as much. Think about a semi-truck crashing into your house or a four-door sedan crashing into your house. Which one's going to do more damage? The truck, right? So the car, the beta decay, does not ionize as much. But now let's think about penetrating power, traffic jam. Semi-truck really just cannot get through the traffic jam. Four-door car, it's, it's going to be slowed down for sure, but it's going to be able to change lanes much easier than the truck, and so it's going to get through better. So the beta decay, beta radiation, has more penetrating power. So it will go through your T-shirt. It will go through your skin. It can be stopped by a sheet of metal or a thick piece of wood. So it's, it's more dangerous outside your body because it can penetrate through your skin and get into you. But it's less dangerous than the alpha radiation once it's inside your body because it doesn't ionize as much. So yes and no. So actually the previous slide, so you subtract an electron and then you add a proton. So you subtract? Uh, So, so what's, yeah, you are subtracting a neutron and adding a proton. Because the neutron, 
comes apart makes an electron and a proton. So you've got one neutron from the nucleus that spontaneously breaks in two. It breaks into an electron and a proton. The proton stays, the electron leaves. So because protons and neutrons are both included in the mass number, the mass number doesn't change. But a neutron got changed into a proton, and the number of protons is what identifies an atom as part of a certain element. And so it does change into a different element. Does that answer your question? It's disturbing. It really is. And then the third one is gamma radiation. So gamma radiation is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Alpha particles, beta particles are particles. Really small particles, but particles. Gamma radiation is electromagnetic radiation. It's got a really high frequency. It's really high energy. It's at the far right side of the electromagnetic spectrum. So high energy photons. It's a form of light. We can't see it, but it is a form of light. So light isn't matter. It doesn't have a charge. It doesn't have any mass. So when gamma rays are emitted, the mass number and the atomic number don't change. Gamma rays are usually emitted along with another form of radiation. So the symbol for gamma radiation is the Greek letter gamma. It's very funny, right? People in the hallway thought so. So gamma, zero, zero. Its mass number is zero. Its atomic number is zero. It's not even a particle. It's a photon. Okay. So we see the gamma rays are emitted in conjunction with other types of radiation. So here, uranium, what kind of decay is this? Alpha. Alpha, alpha decay. Uranium-238 undergoing alpha decay also emits gamma radiation. How would you know that? You wouldn't. I'd have to tell you. How would a researcher know that? They'd have to measure it. They'd have to detect it. Okay? So it's just there. Um, so if it says with gamma radiation, you put the symbol in there. Otherwise, if it doesn't mention that, don't worry about it. Um, it's not a big deal in terms of writing the equations. But we want you to know what it is and its characteristics. So gamma rays are the motorbikes of radioactivity. So low ionizing power. They do not ionize as much as the beta decay or the alpha decay. Motorbike crashing into your house might break the window, dent the garage door, or something like that. It's not going to take out half your house like the semi truck would. But they have high penetrating power. In a traffic jam, a motorbike can go between stopped rows of traffic, it can go up on the sidewalk, it can go on the median all over the place. It can get through. Gamma rays go through lots of stuff. It takes a lot to stop gamma radiation. Several inches of lead shielding. So those vests that they wear when they give you dental x-rays, that's not going to stop gamma radiation. They aren't shooting gamma radiation at you, though, so it's okay. Or, or thick slabs of concrete. So Back when we were in the Cold War and terrified of the threat of nuclear war breaking out, we had you know, these radiation shelter things. Those are very complex and expensive to create because if you're going to make them out of concrete, it's got to be very, very thick. An ordinary concrete wall is not going to stop gamma radiation. So any, any other questions about gamma radiation? Okay, so that's a good question. It doesn't affect the identity of the atom in any way. Why is it even there? What's up with that? That's your question. 
it is a form of energy. So when alpha decay or beta decay occurs, there's often also a large amount of energy that is released, and that energy is often in the form of gamma radiation. So, yeah, it doesn't affect the identity of, of the atom at all. And that's why it's hard to predict, well, when is it coming out and when isn't it? You can have, I, I believe you can have gamma radiation without emission of a particle, um, but usually it, it just comes along with it. And the fourth one is positron emission. So a positron is the antiparticle of an electron. So it's the opposite of an electron. The symbol for the positron is, an, is the same as the electron symbol, but instead of a negative one, we get a positive one. Same mass, opposite charge. So it's an electron, but with a positive charge instead of a negative charge. If, a part, if, if you have an electron and a positron and they run into each other, they annihilate each other. So if you've heard or seen or read any science fiction at all, a lot of it talks about you know, matter and antimatter and they just annihilate each other. That's what antimatter does. This is an antiparticle to an electron. And when you put them together, you have nothing. That's disturbing. <clears throat> when that happens, you do have radiation being given off. Okay, so an electron has mass. Did you know that electrons were, were Catholic? <laughs> yeah, electrons have mass. Oh, sorry. Catholics have mass? Okay. Um, positrons also have mass. So how could we have mass disappearing? We said that wasn't possible. Matter was conserved, except in nuclear changes. Matter can be changed into energy. So you've probably heard of Einstein's famous equation. E equals mc squared. Matter, speed of light squared, equals energy. So when a positron and an electron annihilate each other and their mass goes away, it's converted into energy. Small annihilation of mass gives a huge amount of energy. So in positron emission, a proton gets converted into a neutron and emits a positron. So this is kind of opposite of how the electron came out of the nucleus, right? The electron came from a neutron being split into a proton and an electron. So this is kind of the opposite. A proton is getting split into a neutron and a positron. There's some sort of beautiful symmetry in that. So when an atom emits a positron, so here's the positron symbol, again, the mass number stays the same, but now the atomic number goes down. Emitting an electron, it goes up. Positrons are similar to beta particles in their ionizing and penetrating power, which makes sense because they're the same size as an electron. So we would expect them to have the same penetrating and ionizing power. Any questions? I know, this is the fundamental particles in the atom that aren't supposed to change are changing. It's bothersome. Not my favorite chapter. Here's a summary of what's going on there. Um, alpha decay, beta decay, gamma decay and or gamma emission and positron emission.
So let's write a nuclear equation for the positron emission of sodium-22. So sodium is Na. 22 is the mass number. It identifies which isotope. What's the atomic number for sodium? 11. Positron emission. So then we write the symbol for positron. It's the anti-electron. So it's plus 1. And we put a plus there just sort of to emphasize. We didn't just lose the minus sign. We're really meaning for this to be a plus 1. And then we have to figure out what's left of this after that comes out. So the, atom the mass number stays the same, right? 22. The mass number was 11. Now we've got 1 plus something has to equal 11. That's 10, right? And element 10 is neon. So sodium can turn into neon. Any questions?